Hey, Year 12, here we go. We've got another video coming along here, and we are looking at we're looking at the shape of data here, the shape of a distribution. Okay, so I've got some scores, and I sort of want to see mm, kind of roughly how spread out and mm, how grouped together and in which way they're spread out. That's what a distribution is. So let's have a look here. We want to look at some data sets, and we want to describe its shape. Okay, and we're going to describe that in terms of symmetric, right, symmetric, symmetrical, or skewed positively or negatively, and we get to them, we'll remind what those are. So skewed or symmetrical is what we're going to talk about in terms of the shape. Clusters, right, where I get sort of a few scores closer together than usually, more scores closer together, right, it's not hard and fast rule about what's a cluster and what's not. Um, that's often the case, no hard and fast rules here, unless we sort of artificially impose them. Number of peaks, right, a peak's going to be a bit like a cluster. And mode, right, where we get, remember the mode is the score with the highest frequency. Right. So, first of all here, we've got a stem and leaf plot. These are marks in a Japanese test. Um, our marks range between 30 and 99. If we are to plot all of these on a frequency distribution histogram, I've got a couple of double ups here. Right? I've got a couple of 77s, got a couple of 86s, a couple of 88s. By and large though, right, we would have a big long axis with a whole lot of nothings on there and then very small little peaks. So maybe what you would do if you were trying to get an idea of the distribution here is you might group them together. And now if we're to group these in tens, if we say, well, these are all the 30s, anything between 30 and 39, anything between 40 and 49 and so on, right? And if we now rotate, if I take this and sort of rotate that around this way, maybe this side up a little bit, um, then I do get a bit of a shape, a distribution there, right? I do get to see a bit of a shape of that distribution. So I would say that it has probably a bit of a skew here, right? Because Right, we've got a bit of more of a tail here on the negative side. So I'm going to say this is negatively skewed, negatively skewed. Any clusters? Yeah, well, I would say there's a bit of a cluster between, right, between 43 and 56. There's six scores relatively close together. If you look at these numbers carefully, you'll see the two consecutive scores that are furthest apart are 32 and 43. Okay, from 32 to 43, right, that's quite a big gap. Right, then there's six of them that are pretty close together. So I have a bit of a cluster here. Cluster from 43 to 56. And again, I suppose from, let's say, 73 up to 99. Right, the 70s and 80s. 65 here, it's quite a gap from 65 to 73, so I wouldn't include these couple of scores here in that data. And the same token from 56 to 64, that's relatively, compared to this data, quite a gap. So I think we've probably got two clusters there. That's probably the best way to describe them. Um, that's part one. Number of peaks and modes. Well, uh, do I describe that as peak? There's nothing with a frequency of more than one. If we group the data, there's a little bit of a peak, but it's, you know, pretty smooth compared to the two here and the two here. There is certainly a peak here in the sort of mid-80s. Right. Peak in mid-80s. Uh, small peak. Small peak, let's say high 40s, uh, around 50. Right, it's only evident if you group the data. Right, if you just look at these individually, I think it's pretty silly to say that 77, 86, and 88 are all modes. Right, the frequency of each of those scores is one greater than any other score. That's not significant as far as I'm concerned. Maybe sometimes would be described that way, but I don't. I wouldn't describe those as a mode. I might talk about groups as a mode, um, but I'm going to say this is, has uh, no 
significant mode. You could argue that point. Strictly speaking, you might say 77, 86, and 88 are all modes, but I don't like that. Let's try that again with a different set of data. So, shape of this, right, I do have a bit of a peak here and sort of a bit more happening over on this positive side of it, so I'm going to call that positively skewed. It's posit Ooh, positively skewed. What else do we want to know? Clusters? Um, not really. Uh, there's a bit of a cluster around that, uh, around here. One cluster. Uh, what else do we want to know? Peaks. I guess we can say there's two peaks. Right, because there's sort of a peak here and here. Peaks. Um, and what else do we want to know? Peaks. Modes. Well, yeah, I can call that a mode. One mode. Whatever that is. We don't have any figures on there, so we can't read it off. Okay. That's probably fair enough to say those things. Now, this is a curious data set, and it is exactly symmetrical about six. So I'm going to call it symmetrical oops symmetrical um, it has I don't know if I'd call those clusters but there are four distinct peaks four distinct peaks and two modes five and seven now this is a bit of a gut feeling but you know there are it's not so much how tall these are, but this, the sort of difference between them. So we go from a frequency of 5, a frequency of 6, and one in between. Well, that sort of does seem to be significant. Right? That really does look like it's up and down for some particular reason, so it's worth identifying those. That's the shape of distributions. They're not always black and white. Uh, there are some general things, though, that you can describe. That, and if you justify your answer, you can get away with anything. Righto. Good work.